Hello class, I apologize for having to cancel today, but I've got a meeting that is going to be falling over the top of our class period. So I just wanted to do a quick discussion on some financial statements and ratios to get you guys going and walk through today's problems for you. So you can do this at your convenience um, and please make sure that you have this done by Friday because the problems that I go through on here will be considered as having been completed as part of your in-class exercises. So um, last week we talked about the balance sheet and the income statement and we walked through an example of how to complete those. I'm going to quick run through the statement of retained earnings and then just do a really brief discussion on the um, statement of cash flows for you. Um, and then that'll be it for financial statements and then we'll have some discussions on uh, ratios a little bit. So um, the statement of retained earnings, I touched on this just a little bit last week um, as far as what goes into your ending balance of your statement of retained earnings. Um, this statement is also sometimes called a statement of stockholders equity, depending on how it's just phrased on the financial statements. And that tends to be a little more comprehensive and detailed. Um, and that is what they call it on a 10K, which if you remember from last week is the set of official financial statements that would get filed with the SEC for a public company. So um, moving forward here, um, here's an example of a statement of retained earnings. Now the key things that we need, um, we need to have at least most of these um, items in order to complete the statement of retained earnings. We need to start out with a beginning um, retained earnings balance, which would be the ending balance from the prior period, prior year. So in this case, we're looking at 2015. So our balance that rolls in on January 1st, 2015 would be the ending balance of retained earnings on December 31st, 2014, after all of the revenue and expense accounts have been closed out into the retained earnings. Um, so we start out with that balance. We would add in whatever profits we have, or if you had a loss for that year, then you would subtract the net loss. Um, and so this is your earnings after taxes, but before you pay out any preferred or common dividends, all right? So your earnings after taxes um, is what you would add in there. And then you're gonna subtract out whatever dividends you paid. First your preferred and then your common. Um, and then that gives you your ending balance. So it's not rocket science, it's not super complex. You just start out with your beginning balance, plus or minus your profit or loss, and then subtract out any dividends that you paid during the period. And the idea here is that your retained earnings is whatever earnings after taxes you had that you did not distribute to your shareholders. So you retained it within the company for your own use for expanding your business going forward. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. Um, next, I'm going to show you how we would complete a statement of retained earnings, um, given some financial information for a company. So here we've got Hayes Enterprises. And um, as you can see, these are the same elements that we need for our um, statement that we were just looking at in the PowerPoint. So um, and we're just going to march down the line here and look at what information we have and then figure out how to solve for our remaining information. Um, it says here that we're starting out with a retained earnings balance of 928,000. So we'll just go ahead and put that in here as our beginning balance. Um, next, they want to know what was our net profit after taxes? Well, um, we earned 377,000 after taxes, it says up here. We're going to plug that in. So from this amount, preferred stockholders were paid 47,000 in dividends. Okay, so we've got that. And then at the year end, the firm's retained earnings totaled 1,048,000. So um, that gives us everything except the amount that we were paid out here. So what we need to do then is come up with a subtotal here um, that's going to show us um, what we what we would need to plug in for the common stock here. So go ahead and pull up a calculator here. Um, 
I'm going to take this. I'm going to say, okay, so 928,000 um, plus 377,000 minus 47,000. And that gives us 1,258,000, which is more than the um, 1,048 that we ended up. So we're going to then subtract out from that a 1,048,000. Um, and that gives us $210,000. So if I take these and I come up with a subtotal, and if I know my ending balance, I can subtract that out to solve for whichever remaining one we needed. So that gives us 200,000 here for the common stock. And that's all we have to do. So the retained earnings is not super complex. It's actually pretty easy to do. Um, and so uh, it's just knowing what the parts are so that you can, so you can solve for it. Now our earnings per share then is gonna be that um, earnings available for a common shareholder which um, is going to be 377,000 um, minus our uh, 47,000. So 377,000 um, minus the 47,000 that we paid out in, um, in preferred dividends gives us $330,000 for um, earnings available for common shareholders. And then we would want to take that and divide it by the number of outstanding shares, which they told us is 140,000. So 330,000 divided by 140,000 is um, two point, we'll say rounding it to the nearest penny is 236. Okay, and I'm just making sure here that you have um, this whole screen here available. Hopefully you were seeing the calculator popping up there as I was doing those exercises. All right, so um, the per share cash dividend that we paid then is we would take this dividends here of 210,000 and we would divide that by the 140,000 shares. So 210,000 divided by 140,000 um, gives us $1.50 that we paid per share to the shareholders. All right, so that's all we needed to do for that one. Um, next, we are going to do some problem solving here um, with our um, changes in stockholders equity. So this is just knowing what the parts of this, um, uh, parts of the statement of retained earnings are and then using them to back into the other parts. All right, so in this case, um, let's look at this. I'm going to, um, hold on a second here. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna pull up a um, Excel window here in just a moment. Okay, so here we've got this last problem, 311, and they're giving us some financial statement information here, all right. So um, we're gonna look at the equity sections of our balance sheet that we've got, and our stockholders' equity has gone from 2 million to 7 million, 7.5 million. So we're gonna use the financial statements to figure out why this happened. The company paid total dividends of 200,000 um, during uh, fiscal 2015. So what does that tell us here? Well, let's just put together a beginning balance here. And then let's do net income. And then let's do um, preferred dividends and common dividends. And then um, our ending balance. All right, so if they're telling us our beginning balance was two million and our ending balance was 7.5 million, um, I'm gonna format this a little bit better here so it looks better. Use our thousand separator. Okay, there, so now we can just see that a little bit better. Um, we're gonna look at why, um, why our financial statements ended up being, okay, so we paid total dividends of 200,000. So let's just put this in as a negative. 
So we've got that nice and clear. Well, then all we need to know is um, what our net income was, right? So if we take 200,000 or 2 million minus 200,000, if we highlight over those two, the sum is uh, 1.8 million. So what is the difference between 1.8 million and seven and a half million? Um, let's take a look here. All right, so, oh, this, okay, wait. Oh, total stockholders equity is 2 million. Okay, so I got wrong number. I don't have the retainer earnings numbers here. So go ahead and switch to that. Beginning retained earnings was only a million. All right, and then, oops, one more zero. And then our ending was um, one and a half million. So we want to go up by, um, we need to have um, enough income here that that income minus 200,000 gave us a $500,000 increase because that's what our change was, right? So one million, uh, one and a half million minus one million is 500,000. And we know that in addition to the 500,000 we retained, we had given out 200,000. So that means that we would have to have 700,000 here for income. So if we take 1 million plus seven, that's um, 1,700,000 minus 200,000, that gives us our ending balance of um, one and a half million. So that tells us 700,000 for our net income. And all we're doing is solving for whichever one of these it, oops, I put 70 instead of 700. The number of zeros matters. Okay. All right. So the number of new shares that was issued was what? Well, let's see here. Um, okay. So we have a dollar par value for our common stock. So what does that tell us? That tells us that for each dollar amount we have sitting here in um, um, in our common shareholder balance that we have one share. So we had 500,000 shares here and we had 1,500,000 shares in 2015. So we had to have issued then a million shares to get from there. And you see here, they were actually nice enough to tell us 500,000 to 1,500,000. So we issued a million shares. All right, and then last step, what is the price per share of the new stock? Well, how would we tell that? If you remember when we were talking about balance sheets last week, I said that the um, par value is just a flat amount that gets charged just for tracking purposes. And then every amount that you receive over the par value gets plugged into your paid in capital in excess of par. So, because our paid in capital in excess of par went up from 500,000 to 4,500,000. So that's an increase of $4 million. And that tells us that if we had 1 million shares that we issued, then um, we had $4 per share um, in the paid in capital in excess of par. So I just took the dollar increase in that and divided it by the number of shares that we just figured out were issued, which was a million. So that's $4 there. Plus we had the dollar of par value. So that gives us actually a total value of $5 for which we, uh, that we received for each of those shares. Now, um, so what was our original price of the shares then? How do we figure that out? Well, we can just look back and, and say, okay, previously we had 500,000 shares and then we had $500,000 that was sitting in, in our par value common stock account and 500,000 that was sitting in paid in capital in excess of par. So that's a dollar per share in common stock and a dollar per share in paid in capital. So one plus one equals $2 is what we sold our original stock for. And that's how you can figure out, you can use how many shares you have outstanding and your par value to figure out what those shares were originally sold for.